Welcome to Resonating Through Art. In my last video, we explored how to cast dice. Today, we're going to look at getting a little bit more complicated. What if you want to do a double cast? So this will be working with dice blanks and doing a coating over the top, basically a double cast. You'll need two molds. In this case, I have the Druid Dice nesting molds. So I have the blank set, which is on the left, and the numbered set, which is on the right. As you can see, here's the two molds. Very similar layout, but one has the numbers and one doesn't. The other aspect is these have been made so that the blanks will fit inside. First, mix up the resin in any color that you want. One thing to keep in mind is that anything that you put in the center might end up disappearing or fading into the outer coating if it's too transparent. So it might be the effect you're looking for. In this case, I went for a dark blue. Specifically, this is Eye Candy's No Con Blue. Fill up the blank mold all the way to the top, just like you would be doing a regular casting. We're going to fill it nice and slow and do the usual over pour to make sure that we're not going to be in danger of leaving any voids because we definitely don't want that. Let the bubbles rise. In the meantime, add a little bit to the top, same as you would have done for the top for numbers. Make sure you get a good coating. Again, we want to make sure that we don't have any bubbles left at the top. No voids. Spritz with alcohol just to get rid of any excess bubbles, just to make things a little bit easier. Match the keys on your mold. press. You'll definitely want to make sure you see a nice amount coming out that verifies that you've got the right excess amount to avoid voids. Then put in a pressure pot. Again, you can do the curing on your bench, but you are kind of tempting fate and risking the odds not being in your favor. The pressure pot definitely puts the odds in your favor. And if you're a gamer, you know how that works. Pressurize to 40 PSI overnight. After it's cured, pull out the mold. Give it a good crunch. That just helps to break up the actual uh, flashing. Slowly pull that off. Get as much as you can off and don't forget to clean up your mold when you're done. Removing the excess flashing in that particular case allows for a much better and cleaner seal the next time you do it. And the other thing is the more you take care of your molds the longer they last. With the dice blanks you don't have to worry about the numbers being freed because well there aren't any. The sides are all smooth. Make sure your dice don't run away from you like mine just did. And we have our blanks. But they have flashing. We don't have to sand them, but it is important to remove the flashing where the cap meets the body of the mold. This flashing, if left on, would create some issues when putting inside the main mold. So just take an X-Acto knife, gently scrape it across all of your tops, and just remove the excess flashing. Just makes them nice and neat. And 
and now for some decoration. Now you don't have to decorate, but in my case, what I'm doing is I'm taking a engraver on my Dremel. I've got that mounted to a workstation, which holds it nice and level for me. This is definitely a step you don't have to take. But what I'm going to be doing is engraving some spots, some channels for lightning. Being really careful of your fingers. Take the engraver and run it across into the shape of a lightning bolt. And again, this is optional. You don't have to do anything like this. But it looks kind of neat. And this is what it looks like when I've got all of the sides done for the D6. Now I'm going to go in and paint the lightning with some iridescent pearl. This is actually airbrush paint or high flow. Um, thin works really good for these kinds of lines. What's nice about the channel is that it's allowing me to have a guide for one and another is after I'm done, I can use the trick that I use for the numbers and use an alcohol wipe to neaten things up because the paint will stick better within those channels. Uh, you don't have to be ultra artistic. If you had stickers that you wanted to use, you could apply stickers to the sides of the blanks. Um, you can do some kind of fun multiple color inner core pores. There's lots of different things that you can do. These blanks really give you a lot of options for doing several different techniques. This was one that I just wanted to try and thought it would look really, really, really shocking. And here they are all done. Got a nice sparkle effect for it. But of course, we need numbers. I mean, they're not dice without numbers. And that's where our second mold comes. So for my version, I mixed up some resin and put a little bit of blue, just one dot, just enough to, to tint it. I'm filling the molds about half full. You know, you aren't filling it up all the way because remember that your blanks are going to take up a decent amount of the actual space. Once it's full, be very mindful of the D8. It has longer sides. You want to make sure that you put it in the correct orientation. This is one where if you don't have it right, it's going to stretch the mold odd. They are very firm, very tight fit. Push it in and just gently fit each of them in and let the resin ooze around the outside of it and come up to the top. Some of them are going to be harder than the other. The D20 is a bit of a squishy fit, as you can see. But just plunge it in there, work it in nice and, nice and easy. There goes the D12. And remember, if you have a design on there, whatever orientation that you put it, your highest number is generally at the bottom of the mold and your lowest is at the top. So if you want it a certain direction, just be mindful of it. 
in my case, because the way that I split the lightning bolts, it, it didn't matter that much. Because I had them all meeting at corners. Check, make sure they're all sitting flush. Coat your top, just like normal. Again, being very careful that you get all of the numbers without any bubbles around them. That's really important. After making sure you have plenty on top, spritz it with alcohol, match your key, and once more, smush. You really want to make sure you've got a good coating for this step, because it would be awfully terrible to open up the mold and find you have a void on the final step. Once more, pressure pot. At least that's my key to turning the <laughs> dice odds in my favor. Forty psi overnight. Once more, and out they come. Crack the flashing. Peel it off. You know, usual trick. And as per usual, don't forget to treat your molds well and clean them up when you're done. We want them to have a good long life casting lots of dice. This time, be mindful of the numbers, so spread the mold nicely. We'll loosen up those numbers so they don't catch. Magically, we have our set of dice. Once more, you're going to remove the flashing in preparation for the sanding step. One of the reasons why one would want to do this double coating is that if you've done artwork like painting, lightning, or you know, something along those lines on there or doing like a foil coat, which is another method that I have done. This will protect the artwork and make sure that nothing happens to it. The other thing is, is you can layer in uh, the creating different depths because that lightning stri strike is now deeper within the dice than the numbers. So it just creates more interest. And there's a lot of different ways that you can utilize having a double mold like this. And voila! So, go through, get everybody done. And as per usual, our main sides are shiny and the one at the top, not so. A bit of sanding and we can correct that. Using the Zona papers, 8,000 grit, 10,600 grit, and 22,000 grit. So pink, aqua, and white. We're going to buff them up. I use a pottery wheel. Tape it to the top. Add a little water. 
This helps to control the dust and adds lubrication. Place the die flat on there, the side that you are interested in, which is usually at the top, number one. Rock it so that each of the sides hits flat just to kind of give it a little bit of smoothing out where you trimmed off. This is especially important in the first step. You don't have to use a pottery wheel, you can just use a flat surface, but this does speed things up a lot and saves you a lot of elbow grease. Once you're done with all of the dice, switch to the aqua. Again, add a little bit of water. And repeat. Yes, sanding is boring, but it is a really important step if you wanna have your dice looking nice. Otherwise, your sides don't quite match. Do all the dice, then white. This is your finest grit. Finish your final polishing step. Once you're all done, They look marvelous. So save yourself some elbow grease if you can, if you want to. And now it comes to putting the numbers on. So some paint, alcohol wipe, wide paintbrush, because you don't have to be fine detailed. Take your contrasting color to make sure that it is nice and visible. In this case, I used a light blue. This is acrylic paint. Just glop it on there. Don't worry about going over. Lay it flat on your alcohol wipe. Stripe it across and voila. The only paint that remains is that which is inside of the groove. So your number automatically remains. Repeat and repeat until you're all the way done with all of your numbers. And yeah, this, this part takes a while. So the, this is the D6 all the way done. Once you're all done, let them dry and then wipe off any excess paint that may have remained when you did your quick wiping. Look at those babies, look at them shine. And here is the finished set of dice. I call these Stormfront. A nice, shocking appearance. Now again, keep in mind, there is a lot of different ways that you can utilize the double pour. Use your imagination. So I hope you enjoyed this casting and I look forward to showing you more of my creations and I look forward to seeing some of yours. 
So we'll see you next time and happy casting!